Ngo kama kwe kubona mazima nobula mu Heria cheri tata mata isemu kwe Sine ne borobo sita rama mama Mandelelele borobo sine kere borobo sita rama mama
That means that you are totally dependent on the word of God. What God has spoken, that is what you are hanging on. And so we want to explain further what it means to believe with the heart. So I want to lay as a foundation this truth that the heart of man is the spirit of man. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verses 23, we see clearly there Paul saying that man is a spirit, that man has a soul, and that man lives in a body. So you are not the body that we see. You are a spirit being. So when we speak about you believing God with your heart, we are not speaking about the biological organ, the organ that pumps blood throughout your body. No. We are speaking about you, the core you, which means the spirit you, you the spirit being. So it is with the heart that man believes. It is with the spirit that man believes God. So I always like to tell the people that it is possible to doubt in your mind, to have doubt in your, in your mind, but believe with your heart. Because it is in your mind that the enemy throws arrows of accusation, arrows to target your faith, to bring you down. But be careful to guard your heart, the Bible says, guard your hearts from out of it issues the issues from the issues of life. So friends, when we say we are believing God, we are saying we are believing God with our heart. We are believing God with our spirit. The word heart used in that scripture, in Romans chapter 10 and verses 10, simply means the core of man. When we say the heart of a subject, when we say the heart of a tree, when we say the heart of a matter, we are speaking about the core, the essence of the tree, the essence of the subject, the essence of the matter. So when we say that you believe God with your heart, we are saying you believe God from with the core of your substance, which is the spirit being. You, the spirit. You, the spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. We see from the scriptures in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, that uh, God says, let us make man in our own image. Let us make man after our righteousness. So we were created in the image of God. But you see, friends, God is not a man, the Bible says. Numbers chapter 23 and verses 19. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a man. So when we say, when the Bible says that you were made in the image of God, after the likeness of God, it simply means you are made in the, in the, in the image of the Spirit of God. He's referring to you as a spirit being. The Bible declares also in the book of Proverbs chapter 20 and verses 27, the Bible says that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. So I want to go deeper for us to understand what the heart means. Believing God, believing God with your heart means simply believing God with your spirit. The Bible speaks about a dialogue in the book of John chapter 3, Nicodemus approaches Jesus Christ and they have a conversation regarding salvation. But we see in that text of scripture that they were speaking at cross purposes. Jesus says that no man can enter the kingdom of God except he be born again. And then Nicodemus answers the Lord at the level of humanity. He says, how can a man who is old, again be born again. Can he go back into his mother's womb and be born again? So Jesus is referring to the spirit of man, whereas Nicodemus is speaking about a physical body. And so in the verses, uh, verses 4, I mean, verses 6, Jesus then explains to Nicodemus and he says, 
that whatever is born of the flesh is flesh and what is born of the spirit is spirit so you must understand my friend that you are a spirit being and you have a soul and you live in a body so when we believe god you're not believing god with your body not with the physical senses do we believe god neither do you believe god with your soul the soul is composed of the will the intellect and the, uh, the, 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 the mind so we don't believe god with our soul neither do we believe god with our bodies but we believe god with our heart not the physical organ but with the core of our being which is the spirit you the bible continues also to explain this uh, distinction in the book of second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. for there the bible says that for which cause we faint not paul is speaking about the glory that will be revealed after we go through uh, trials in this world he says for this cause for this cause we faint not but though our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day so paul is making a distinction between the inward man the spirit and the outward man the physical body so the bible makes a distinction between the inward man and the outward man the outward man is the body and the inward man is the spirit the outward man is the body but the inward man is the spirit listen to me friends the inward man is not the soul those are different scriptures declares in hebrews 4 4 12 that the word of god is active sharper than any two-edged sword dividing between spirit and soul so those are also separate entities so the inward man refers to the spirit not to the soul so it is with the spirit that we believe god and not with the mind the soul or with the body the heart of man is the spirit of man in romans chapter 2 verses 28 29 romans chapter 2 verses 28 to 29 paul says for he is not a jew which is one outwardly neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh but he is a jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of god so Paul is saying that circumcision is of the heart, comma, in the spirit. So it's relating or using the word heart and spirit interchangeably. So it is with the heart that we believe God. So in this passage, Romans 2, 28-29, the heart of man and the spirit of man are used interchangeably circumcision is of the heart in the spirit this is referring to your human spirit not the holy spirit but your human spirit so your heart according to this text of scripture your heart is your spirit let me also look at the another text of scripture in first corinthians chapter 14 and verses 14. first corinthians 14 and verses 14. Paul is speaking about the gifts of the Spirit, and particularly speaking about praying in tongues. And this is how he says, he puts it. He says, For I, if I pray in an unknown tongue, if I pray in the Spirit, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is Paul saying? That my soul is unproductive, but my spirit is praying. So the Bible makes a distinction between the spirit of man and the understanding or the soul or mind of man. So I want us to understand, friends, that it is with the heart that we believe God. So when somebody is saying, I believe God, they are meaning, they simply means that they are believing God with their heart. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verses 27, 1 Corinthians 9, verses 27. Again, Paul makes this distinction very clear. 
For there Paul says, but I keep under my body, and I bring it into subjection, lest by any means after I have preached others, I myself should be a castaway. I myself should be disqualified. So notice this word. Paul is saying, I keep under my body. So he's not saying that he's referring to his physical body. He's saying that I keep under my body. He says, and I bring it, bring one, the body, unto subjection. So I bring the body into subjection. So Paul is referring to his spirit. That by my spirit, I bring under my body. In other words, I control my body. Lest having preached to others, I might be disqualified. The inward man, the spirit, friends, is the real man. Notice Paul is referring to himself as the spirit being. I keep myself under. I bring my body in subjection. So we understand, therefore, that the spirit man, the heart of man, the inward man, is the real man, not the thing that we see outwardly here, the physical body. Paul again says in the book of Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. He says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. So Paul is referring to you, the sweet you. Present your body. He's making that distinction. Present your body, you the spirit person, Present your body a living sacrifice. And then he goes on beyond the body. And then he says, do not be conformed to this world. Instead, be transformed. Be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. By the transformation of your soul. So that's how we renew our mind. We renew and transform our soul. Notice in Romans 12, that Paul is not writing to sinner. Paul is writing to saints. He's writing to believers. For in Romans chapter 1 and verse 7, he says, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. To all that be in Rome, beloved in God, called to be saints. So he's writing to saints. So as a believer, the child of God, Paul is saying, the Holy Spirit is saying, that do something about your body. Do something about your soul. So he's talking to you as a spirit being. So friends, there's a distinction between spirit, soul, and body. It is with the heart, it's with the spirit that we believe God. And if we understand this, then it will be easy for us to believe God and to speak to mountains and to not doubt and we shall begin to see results in our prayers. Another text of scripture that brings this clarity even much more profoundly is in the book of Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 28. Jesus talks about the story of the poor man Lazarus and the rich man, how both of them one day died. And the Bible says, that Lazarus soul, Lazarus was taken up into the bosom of Abraham. And then the rich man was cast away in the place of fire, in, in hell. And even when he was there in hell, the rich man had a memory. The Bible says he spoke to Abraham and he said, please tell <clears throat> Lazarus to and let's dip his finger in water that he may come and put on my tongue because it is too, too bad here. Mm. And Abraham said, no, no, there's a big cousin, there's a big gulf between you and us. Nobody can come from here to go there or go from there to come here. And so he says, but okay, can you at least send Lazarus to go and warn my brothers? So this man, 
this rich man, although he had died, he still has a memory. That means his soul is intact. When you die, your soul remains intact. When you die, we see Lazarus' spirit went straight into Abraham's bosom. So there again we see that the spirit is different from the soul and is different from the body. So it is with the heart that man believes unto righteousness. And it is with the mouth that confession is made unto salvation. When we say we are believing God, what does it mean? It means that it is with the heart that we are believing. Therefore, we must guard our heart and make sure there is no doubt in our hearts whatsoever. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1, if you are writing. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verses 1. The Bible says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, Paul is referring to the man's body, the physical body. If that were dissolved, we have a building of God and a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So Paul is saying, even if this one were to die and it's buried, I still have a heavenly uh, house, not made with human hands, but that one which is eternal. That spirit, part of me, will be eternal, it will remain. So we understand that even if the physical body is buried in the grave, the spirit part of you, that is the building that Paul is speaking about, which is not made with human hands, that one will live eternally, in the presence of God, if you're a child of God. And if you go further down to verses 6 and 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 and 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 and 8. This is what Paul says. He says, Therefore we are always confident. We are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So Paul is making the distinction that in the spirit, we can be present with the Lord. In the spirit, we can be present with the Lord, even if we are absent from uh, the body here. So who is going to be absent from the body? Who is going to come from the body? He says we are the real us, the spirit us, the spirit man on the inside of each one of us as Christian. We are going to be absent from the body here on earth one day. But we will be present with the Lord. The Bible talks of the inward man as the real you. All of these scriptures prove that statement. So as I bring this to a conclusion, I want us to reflect on the scriptures that we read at the beginning. Romans chapter 10 and verses 10. Paul wrote and said, For with the man, for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. For it is with the heart that you believe unto. And as we shall see in the subsequent teachings, this is not just for salvation. It also relates to in all aspects of life. Whether it is baptism in the Holy Spirit, whether it is financial breakthrough, whether it is physical healing, it is with the heart that you believe unto healing, unto righteousness, unto financial breakthrough, unto deliverance, unto baptism of the Holy Spirit, unto the gifts of the Spirit. It is with the heart that you believe unto. We will see later on as we go along how we activate this faith. But today, I hope you understand, my friend, that it is with your heart that you believe God unto something. So guard your heart from out of it flows the issues of life. I want to bless God for you that is watching today. And if you have been uh, blessed by this, uh, uh, someone, this broadcast, please share. Like the program comment that will be a blessing to us and we hope that we'll be able to see you next time as we continue on our journey the pursuit of faith hope 
and love in perilous times. I cannot overemphasize. The one thing you and I need more than ever before is faith. It is faith. Jesus asked the question, but when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? I pray that you'll be one among those that will have faith. That Jesus Christ will find you not among those who have been cast away, who have walked away from you. No, no. You'll be strong in faith in Jesus' mighty name. I bless you today in Jesus' name. And I pray that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God that you believe, may he make a way for you. May he answer your prayer. And may God exceed your expectations according to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. I hope to see you again in Jesus' mighty name. God richly bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.